So why are we switching to Bluebeam to start with? The three main benefits that I see are speed, additional features, and then the chance to really upgrade and improve our workflow by doing different tasks, different orders. So first thing, speed. Someone like me, I just love uh, shortcut keys. I love uh, the ability to make your own customized toolboxes. I just think it allows you to work more quickly and not get bogged down. So I, I love that. You can see there in this little dialogue here, there's a My Toolbox with these numbers. You can actually hit uh, the one or the two on your keyboard and quickly type in keys. And there's a recent toolbox that allows you to basically remember tools that you've used recently. So you can reuse the same note, reuse the same comment over and over again. Very quick, uh, very efficient. There's some cool tricks for copying markups as well. And then I think probably where most people are gonna see the benefit is just additional features. So you can see here, I just showed a couple examples. This red line, you can actually draw a line like a join or a polyline with curves in it. You can draw lines that have text in it. This saw cut line is a custom one that I made. You can have a circle uh, with an arrow with different colors. You can put hatching in here. Really a lot of ways to improve our markups to give to drafters or to review um, different red lines uh, for plan reviews. You can do measurement measurements here. You can see I, I did this is actually to scale. So for people who don't have MicroStation or Civil 3D or just want to do a quick takeoff, a quick area calc, you have the ability to do that. Um, and then there's a lot of new tools in terms of importing, exporting markups that I think is going to really improve just file management. And then workflow. So th those first two things, speed and, and features, those are really like a little bit of add-ons to, I would say like Adobe on steroids a little bit. Uh, this new one, Bluebeam Sessions or Bluebeam Studio, is, is sort of something totally different. It's basically taking a PDF, putting it up in the cloud, like a Google Doc, and then multiple people can log into that same document and then they can all put their comments in. So this is gonna work really, really well for, for reviewing documents. Maybe you have six or seven groups that are looking at the same document. I think it's gonna be really, really efficient and just really, really helpful. So how am I gonna set up this presentation? Start off by just looking at a general layout, like in the lay of the land, where are the toolbars? And how do I even navigate? It looks different than Acrobat. What should I, uh, where should I get started? Uh, secondly, I'll talk about markups, some of those tips and tricks that I was, I was showing you, how to make markups, some improvements over Acrobat, and then also how to manipulate those markups, you know, how to use them as comments and maybe export them to Excel or just search through them in, in efficient ways. And then thirdly, I'm going to talk about measuring tools. So like doing measure, basically taking your PDF, setting a scale, doing area takeoffs, quantities, or just improving your mark markups by making them, make them drawn to scale. And then I'm going to spend a bunch of time on the Bluebeam sessions. And I think this is something that CED is really going to benefit, especially for our project reviews. So, you know, you have Portland Water Bureau, BES, traffic, signals, R group different reviewers are all looking at the same document. I think it's going to be pretty efficient. There's also an integration with eBuilder or Roadrunner. So we'll be able to create it in that way. And I think we'll really integrate well with our existing work. I'm going to finish off with some tips and tricks, stuff that I found to be really helpful, um, stuff that maybe you guys have seen before, maybe you haven't, um, but stuff that I have just really enjoyed using over the last maybe year and a half of using Bluebeam. And then if I have time, we'll have some Q and A at the end. And I'm hoping this whole presentation it's not just the one and done. I'm hoping that everyone can learn. Maybe we're going to have open up discussions and we're going to have some sort of Q&A follow-up or additional uh, presentations in the future by me, by others, by maybe Bluebeam. I'm hoping it just fits into the whole Bluebeam training that probably needs to be done uh, citywide. All right, let me jump into Bluebeam here. So the first thing I want to look at is just the general layout. I'm going to open up a normal drawing. I just dragged basically just took a file and dragged it in here and also go to open. So some of you probably noticed that I told you to download a file um, to start with. The file that I told you to download was called a profile. Um, and you can see if I go to this review tab at the top here, these profiles are essentially different ways the screen is set up personalized for, for use. So if I, for example, if I change this to a different one, these toolbars at the top, are going to change. A toolbar at the side might appear. Some of these toolbars in the left might change. Some of the, so, so basically all the customization built into each person's Bluebeam view is going to be potentially changed if I change these. So I've actually created one for today that I think is one that a lot of people are going to find pretty easy to use. But this is something that's totally customizable and you can see Daniel 
Jenkins and I have been going back and forth and he has settings that he likes and I have settings that I like. So I think that's one feature that people may want to mess around with a little bit. But if you did download the one that I sent you, if you go to this profile, go to manage profiles, and then you can import that file. So that's the one that I have uh, right there. And it should look uh, the same as my screen does. This actually might be up here is where I prefer to put my markups dialog, but should look really similar. So I'm gonna try to walk through with, with everyone. What is the lay of the land? Now, if you're totally clueless, totally beginner, totally new newbie, almost all the tools are available in, in different places. So you, need to figure out what's best for you, but if you don't know where to go, looking at these top dialog boxes, you can get to pretty much every tool you might need without clicking any of these hotkeys or sidebars. So if I wanted to draw a line under my tools, there's a markup tab, a lot of stuff in here. I could stamp, I can use the measuring tools. They're all buried in these different toolbars. So I'd familiarize yourself with these top bars. These batch ones are a little bit more advanced, but there's a lot of tools within the document the tools and the view tab that those, those three headings really have pretty much everything you probably ever want to use. Everything else I would say is, you know, just different ways to get to the same thing. So for example, you can see, I have these toolbars at the top. I could turn these off. I could add more of them again, very customizable. And I'm basically going to start by just walking through these little side panels. And so again, a lot of these are really similar to Acrobat thumbnails. This is something that also in Acrobat, you've probably seen that before. These are just recent files, bookmarks. So these are different ways to jump between different pages. These are, are often auto-generated when we, when we make a, a CAD set. This toolbox one, I'm gonna come back to, but these are where we're gonna be spending a lot of different time. And as I mentioned, you could go up in here, you could make markups with these tools, but I find myself really using these tools a lot. And you can see I've got my own custom toolbox here. And then some of these other ones are just canned ones that are built into Bluebeam. Search, again, really similar, similar to Acrobat. Measuring tool, another one we're gonna jump into a little bit later, but this is where we're gonna be setting our scale. This is where we're gonna be measuring and doing area calculations. This one's called Bluebeam Studio. This is uh, putting the PDF in the cloud, doing the Google Doc style, style reviews. Um, I think that's gonna be really powerful. And then there's also a properties bar as well, of which, for example, if I make a line, automatically generates a little mini properties bar, but if I have my properties bar on the left selected, it will give me even more options to manipulate that if I want to. There are, if you right click here, there are even more things you could add in if you wanted to. You could turn these off. Again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start talking about markups. And the place that I like to do markups the best is just using my tool chest. So you can see here, I have a my tool set up here. Uh, and these are ones that I have basically picked, ones that I use a lot. So for example, if I just click my red pen, I can draw a red pen, pretty simple. Same with my blue. Now, you also notice there's a number next to that. And if I just hit the one number, it will also draw a red pen. If I hit the three, it will draw a green line. So this is really the thing that I find best about Bluebeam. Uh, it's the thing I use all the time. When I first started at Peabot, we, I was still using Acrobat and we hadn't really switched over to Bluebeam yet. This was the thing that I missed the most because for anyone who's used Acrobat, often basically coming in here, making a comment and you're manually going in, changing the colors. If you need to change the colors, just very slow, very tedious. Whereas with Bluebeam, you can just come in here, you can type whatever you want, note, and it's all set up the way you want it to. Now, how do I actually change these? Now I can click on these and change them, customize them as I'd like, or I can take stuff from the, the ones that are built in and I can just literally just come up in here and drag them up. I can drag them around in here. Now this one, number four is, I wanna hit four now. It's gonna draw that one that I just moved in there. I can delete them. Now one other, other thing you may have noticed as I've been making comments in here, it's actually been populating my recent tool as well. So it basically saves the tools that you've been using recently. So for example, this one I made that says uh, delete note, if I just click on it, I can now use it again. I can go to the next page, use the same note again. If I know that I'm gonna be using this a lot in the project, I can drag it right up here and I can have it saved, saved there, either permanently or maybe just for that project. So these are some of the, the really cool things that I think we're gonna be using a lot in terms of just increasing our speed, um, and doing markups in a way that I find to be very efficient. So once I've made some markups, 
The one other thing that I've found to be really, really helpful, Bluebeam is the search bar or the, the, the markup list bar. And again, you may have noticed, I actually prefer to put it up in this top right corner. It defaults down here, but I just, I don't know. I find that for me, this is something that I really prefer to, to do that. So I'm going to do that in this setting. You guys can do it as you'd like, whatever feels best for you, but this is where I, I prefer to put it. But the thing that I've been just loving about Bluebeam is just how quickly it is to search through the markups list. So for example, on this project, you know, in, in Acrobat, I think you can do the same thing, but in, in Bluebeam, it's just, it's much more efficient. So I, for example, I know that I have a couple of comments in this, this plan set that have something to do with a fence. I can't remember exactly where they are. I know they're buried somewhere in this document. So I'm going to just type in fence and I'll click on the document and it will just zoom me right to where I need to go. And it actually created a little custom filter. You can see, I actually have other doc, other comments on this sheet and it just grays everything out that does not meet the search criteria, which is, which is fence on this sheet. And so, yeah, I think that that stuff is uh, super, super helpful. Let's go along with just the search. You can also create this thing called a filter list. So if you click on the filter list option, it creates a new tab over top of the, all these columns for you. Uh, and then you could click on, if you notice, uh, this is pink. I've actually made a couple of pink comments and the pink comments in this plan set are things that I wanted to ask my supervisor about. So I made them all pink and this is my number six here. So I can make another one here and call that how so now it appears in this, everything else is now grayed out. And when I I talk to my supervisor or my engineer on this project, I can quickly and easily jump through the comments to go to the exact pages that I want to ask him questions about. So I can turn this off and then now all of these comments are, are back uh, showing full color. You can do that for any, any different type of comment. You can search by date, you can do auth author. So you know, if I had multiple reviewers in here, I could look at just my comments. We can, you know, I could search for, I see that one says curb there. I could either type in curb or I could find specific comments in there that I wanted. I'm really, really helpful, really fast, really easy to just jump back and forth between different pages. These columns are also customizable. I can come in here, columns, I can change these, I can add them. These five are the ones that I find myself using, but again, different people are going to have it set up uh, different ways. A feature that a lot of people have been asking about and curious about is the idea of importing and exporting comments from one drawing into another. And there's two ways that are Pretty efficient. I would say the first way is much better, but doesn't work for every document. All right. So here's a review set. It's actually a project that happened recently. We had a 99% review and you know, there's like a two to three week review process. And so during the review, you know, I'm still working on the plans. I'm still adding comments in. And so you can see here's all my comments that I've actually made after the project has gone out for review. And so I want to, I want to keep using these comments and I want to import other people's comments. And so you can see my project here has, this has 97 pages in it. And so there's actually a way to import comments from another document. However, that uh, document needs to have the exact same number of pages or else you can, you know, add trick, add a couple blank pages in if you need to. But generally speaking, if you have comments that have 30 pages in there, and you try to import the comments, they're going to come in in the wrong spot. So I do have Jason gave me comments. And Sabrina gave me comments. You can see Sabrina's comments, only 32 pages. Jason's is 97. So it's the exact right. He basically took the entire plan sheet, the entire plan set, and just added comments where he wanted to. Sabrina, on the other hand, she exported out only the plan sheets that had comments on them. So if I try to import Sabrina's comments, it's not going to work very well. But I will show you if I come into my comments bar under the markup list, go to markups, import comments. And I can either import them from, uh, you can actually export a specific comment file if you wanted to save some space, or you could actually just click on the file itself and import them straight from there. And so now when I come in here, you can see here's some comments from Jason. I'll just go to this page. You can see here's a page where Jason and I both have comments on them. I go back to that filter option I was showing you before. And I just, I'm gonna just, just turn on Jason's and see mine got grayed out. See mine are flipping on and off. And we actually have some of the same comments, which is kind of good. And here I'm graying out Jason's comments and I'm just showing mine. So now what do I do about Sabrina's comments? 
Unfortunately, there's not really a, an easy way to do it without adding in a ton of blank pages and you end up spending probably more time doing that. And the old way you did this with Acrobat was you could just come into this page. I guess I go to select all, edit, select all, or I just hit control A and then I can go to edit copy or control C. Now I come into this page and I know this is on page 2C2. So if I paste these in here and now they're all over the place, this is not that helpful, right? I'm having to drag them and now this is especially annoying. That was the Acrobat way, but there's a new tool in Bluebeam, which is called paste in place. And it basically just copies them in to the exact spot that someone put them in, saves the X and Y coordinates on each comment. So I find that to be really helpful. Unfortunately, I still have to do this 32 times. It's not going to be save you that much time, but it is one other cool trick especially if you have comments from just a couple of sheets. I think this is going to be uh, a really helpful uh, thing to, to learn about. All right, so once I have all those comments in here, I can come into my markups list. And if I wanted to export them to an Excel file, I could do that. You just click this little go to export button. And there's a couple other cool things you can do in here, but I'm not going to get into that today. But if I click CSV, I'm just going to keep, actually this is Sabrina, so I'm going to go to review set one, and then we'll just create it as an Excel sheet. Pretty easy. And you'll notice I have all the right page labels on here, which I've actually added those in. Those don't come in automatically. Um, so I'm going to show you that next, but you can see here, I've got the date, I got the color. You know, you don't necessarily need all that data. You might want to manipulate which columns you have in here before you export, but uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. Especially when we're going to have a review set with, you know, seven or eight different people on there, it will all come in with the right author. Now, I don't know if you probably didn't notice this, but when I brought in those comments from Sabrina, they actually, they came in under my name because I'm copying them in. This is C1, again, do the paste in place, and I can just do control. I don't know if you, I guess I didn't say this yet, but there's a lot of shortcuts built in to Bluebeam and they give them to you, get, tell you where they are. So you could hit control shift V, you know, like I was showing you before with the markups, you know, there's built in shortcuts for, for a lot of these things already. So don't necessarily have to make them your shortcuts in your my toolbar, but I'm going to just go here and go to paste in place and there they go. However, when I click on it, see it, it came in as P Rudwick. So that is one slight flaw with copying in someone else's markups. Whereas the ones I imported from Jason, those came in with his, his name on them. So I think that's really helpful to know who made the markup. Um, that's a definitely a, a benefit and a disadvantage of copying in in markups. So another thing I wanted to show you was that page label thing that I was mentioning, and I'll explain this a little bit better. So this drawing, see at the bottom, close out of this tab, pages six of 86 also shows up in here, page six. You can see it says six and then scale not set on there. And then also in the markups panel as well, it says page six. Now this is actually page 2B2, and it would be way better if we could get especially when we export them into from Excel, if we get those comments to be on the right page number. So there's actually a really easy way to do that in Bluebeam, which is another really cool feature of Bluebeam. Now I walked before I showed you these, these bookmark tabs. Now these bookmarks are basically shortcuts to each sheet that are created when we print the files. And you can actually link these to your page number. And the way you do that is by going up to the document and you go to create page labels. And this is also available under, this is where I normally do it, under the thumbnails tab, this little create page labels button. So if I hit create page labels, it's going to change this page label here. So I can either pull it from that bookmarks, those shortcuts, or, and I'll do this in a second, but I'm going to start with the bookmarks. The page region actually lets you pick a spot on the page and it scans that information, scans the text and then, and then brings it in. So I just, I just did the page labels. That was really quick from the bookmarks. You can see now this says plot O1C. And if I, if I save this file, it will update and pull up in here. I'm not sure that it, it should work. Something, something went funny. Try one more time. Huh? All right. Well, work the several times I did practice rounds. I'm going to, I'm going to do the other one, which I find even uh, more powerful, which is the page region. So if I click page region here, I can actually select a spot on my, on my page. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than I think, because some of the pages may have an A or may have like two G six, take a little bit more space. 
and I'm going to hit OK. This takes a little bit longer because it has to scan each page. And something's funny going on. Oh, never mind. It's working. 16. OK, so it's showing it correctly. Maybe I had it going before correctly. But you see 1A, now it shows up right there. It shows up in your thumbnail bar, and it should show up in here. Here you go. So if we did it with the bookmarks, it would show up. It would say, it would say plot sheet dash 2B1. Well, no, it still works, but it's not as, as pretty. And if you guys want to get really advanced, you can actually make multiple regions. Let me go to a different. People are sending me chats, which is fine. Let me, here we go. Simple sections. Let me go to one that's a little bit later. Like you can see it messed up a little bit. You know, I grabbed a T here. I probably grabbed the T from, from there. So it's, it's not perfect, not a perfect tool, but here's an example. So if I hit this page region, I'm going to try to make it not too big this time. And I can actually make another page region here. A little thing and add another one. And you can see it's giving you a little preview. So it might take a tiny bit longer here. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Okay, so now you can see it's pulled in quite a bit more data. And again, you know, probably made more mistakes as well, but I think this is uh, pretty cool. And if I save the drawing, they should show up correctly over here. Here we go. So you can see you know, Southeast Rhone Street. So pretty, pretty helpful. This little thing. Now if I export, export this as an Excel file, it just makes it a little bit easier for everyone to figure out where, where the data is coming from. So play around with that as you want. I don't know if this actually worked. No, I think it did work pretty well. There you go. It's a 2F3. Yeah. Oh, one more thing I'm going to show you with comments. So remember Sabrina's comments that she gave? They had only, she only had the pages that had the comments on them. So she didn't include blank pages. Now, while that's a little bit annoying for importing comments, it is actually really nice for drafting because they're not, you know, given 90 sheets and then only 10 of them have comments on them. It's just, it's a pain in the butt for them. And you could go through individually and pull them out, but that's tedious. So why not automate, right? So if you go into your comments bar, you go in here, hit control A, or you could, I guess you could do select all in there. And now you can see it's actually only selected some of the sheets. So you can see it's only highlighted some of the documents. So if I right click on one of those ones that it's highlighted and I go to extract pages, it's giving me the option to do all pages, current, or I can just pick the selected ones. And so I can just export out just the, just the pages that have comments on them. Again, sometimes this makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't, but it's a good tool to be able to be able to. Next thing I wanted to show you guys was the measurement toolbar. Okay. So I showed you where it is. It's right over here to the left. And I think you can actually get to it up here. And that's actually is even in the, some of these comments, some of these purple ones are what the measurements ones are for. Go back to the thumbnail option. You can see, and I haven't set my page levels for these ones because it says one and not 11, right? But then you can see I actually have a scale set in here for this one. So if you open up a drawing that wasn't set to scale, it would just be, it'll say no scale set. And so I am going to click on this and I'm going to show you how you set a scale. So normally when you click on the length and you draw something in, it's going to ask you to calibrate a scale because I already have a scale in here. It, it's not going to ask me that. So I'm going to just show you if you click on the calibrate option, there's a couple options here. One is preset and one is uh, custom. And so the preset, you can, if you know your scale is one inch equals 20 feet, you can just click on one inch equals 20 feet and it should be correct. Or I can click on one inch 40 feet. And you notice that that one actually changed. So say you, you come in here and you, do all your measurements and you had the scale set incorrectly, you can just come in here and, and change it to the correct scale. So that's a really nice feature. But I know this pro this plan is one inch equals 20 feet. However, if I wanted to wanted to check that, I could hit the length button and then come in and draw it. And I would highly recommend this just to make sure that it, it lines up with our scale here. And you know, if you really want to be uh, extra careful, you, maybe you have a known a known line. I don't know if I have any on this sheet, but you know, you can check your sidewalk six feet that sounds about a normal sidewalk width with the curb so those are stuff that you can do to check but many times you might not know the scale so if you come over here and custom you can hit calibrate when you hit calibrate it's going to first ask you to measure a point i'm actually going to measure it a little bit off kilter just to show you an example it's measuring it at 2.001735 so it's because I, I measured it at the diagonal so i can actually come in here and just fix that i know it's supposed to be two inches and then I can come in here and I actually know it's supposed to be 40 feet. So I'm going to type in 
40, and I'm gonna hit the little clip thingy here, and I'm gonna hit the apply scale. And now see it says two inches equals 40 feet. So it's the same thing as one inch equals 20 feet. Now that's the simplest, simplest thing to do. Where where might you use this? Like it doesn't seem that powerful, but the three ways I was thinking I would be using this were one, say I, you know, there's a I'm gonna make up imaginary water line is in here. I know it's actually 17 feet uh, off of off a line, so I could come in here and try to manually type in 17 feet, but oh, double click on it and then just type in 17, hit the little button there. It now goes to exactly 17, so I can then come in and move it. So I think this is going to be pretty cool when it comes to drafting. You know, we can be a little bit more precise. You know, we don't need to be perfect for drafting, but you know, if you can get it closer, I think that's going to be helpful uh, and it gives you a better sense of scale as well. You can also do the area takeoffs. So if I come in here and I can measure, I want to check how, what is my monolithic area? You know, it says something on the plan set. Um, and I can actually come in here and I, I click and go convert to arc and convert to arc. And this one is going to be giving me a funky thing, but I'm not sure why it does that, but got to play around with it a little bit. Anyways, get the idea. You know, it's, it's giving you that area. I mean, if you, if you changed you now this to one inch, now it's, it's giving you a different square footage. So it's, it's all dynamic, which is very helpful, but it also means you got to make sure your, your scale is right. So just make sure you're, make sure you're checking that. If I wanted to come in here and do measure how much curb I have, I could come in here. Same thing as before. I'm going to add those little curves in. I'm going to right click, go convert to arc, convert to arc. And you can see it's giving me this value here, uh, 102 feet, six and a half inches. And this is one slight flaw of the uh, measuring tool. It defaults to feet and inches, which I don't prefer. I much prefer to do it in feet. So I'll show you the way to fix that and, and you can have it set the default set to something better. If you click on that line and you can change your units to foot right there and then it'll give it to you in feet. You can also change that right in here under the measurings right there. And then if you go to that properties toolbar, now if you go to set as default, now next time you do that same command, it is going to have it in the right units. So. I, you might have to go through it. This is the same issue. So when you, when you're starting off out setting this up, I would recommend clicking here, changing this to foot, and then go to the properties bar. And you might have to right click, show your properties bar, and then go to the bottom set as default. And then I think once that's set up, it should be, should be good going forward. You could also, if you want to always see these in green or whatever your color preference is, click on it and just set as default and now when you it still shows as purple but when you draw it in it should come in as green you can do that with any any tool as well i mean just like under your toolbars under your markups you know say i really like just hitting the q for call out i don't want to put it in my quick properties this is actually a similar thing to adobe if i type this in testing defaults is red click on that if i make this yellow make this green uh, and I click on it and I go to yeah, screwed up some file by accident. Control Z's to go back. It says default. Now, when I hit Q, voila. And so there's a lot of stuff you can you can customize to, to your liking. All right. I had one more cool thing I wanted to show you. you know, I'm just going to mention it. I don't know if we'll go into it, but two other features of the scale. You can do a separate Y scale if you want. So a profile, we're often seeing different vertical scales and you do that the same way and I'll show, I'll show you on this project here. So if I, if I come in here and I want to set a custom X scale, I know this is 14 and a half feet. I already have that set up and then I come into the Y scale and I set this, um, I'm going to hit Calv right here and I know this is six inches or actually I'll just make this 12 inches. It's 12 inches or I can do one foot. Just make sure you type in the right little button there and then now if I draw something in, that'll be 23 feet. And you can see I've, I've changed my, my default here. Or I can come in here and this should be one foot. And those are not the same, those are not the same customized options. So one thing I did yesterday was I was drawing in a water line below this area. And you can see I, I have this elongated pipe. You know, I, I basically, I adjusted this as a five foot pipe. I made it five foot vertical at different X and Y scales, 
um, and I was able to draw it in, you know, close enough to scale. I mean, this is probably better in, in CAD, obviously, but if you're doing little exhibits like this, this can be a cool little tool that you might, you might consider using. And then the last thing, you can actually have viewports in here. So maybe you have plan and profile on the same sheet. The profile could have one scale, the plan could have a different scale, or maybe you have different plans with different scales in the same sheet. So a lot of stuff you can do with the scales and the calibration, but simple, simple for most people, like simply just doing measurements, lengths, areas, that stuff, I think it's going to be pretty cool. The next part of the training is going to be sessions. So again, sessions are cloud-based PDFs, Google doc version of, of PDF. So I'm uploading it to the cloud. Multiple people are logging into their account. They're able to comment. They're able to work collaboratively, but on the flip side, there are some slight downsides to the session. And by slight, I mean stuff that's bad enough that you might not want to use a session for everything. You know, it makes, it makes sense for some things, doesn't make sense for others. Uh, so let's first talk about the good. The good is, you know, you got one document, you can see this little image, a couple people are working in there at the same time. You can follow along with what they're doing. You can see their comments. You can write them little chat notes. You could send them a message about a certain comment if you wanted to. Now, instead of having six PDFs where we're importing comments in from, we have one. Download the whole thing and everyone's comments are in there. Integrates pretty well with eBuilder. So people can get a link from eBuilder and then or Roadrunner and they can all get in the same document. Pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff for collaboration. Another real good, nice benefit is this is something a lot of people have wondered about is what if someone wants to get in there and they don't have a license, uh, a Bluebeam license, they haven't paid for a seat. So in a session, I, I should say in a normal PDF, you know, I try to open it up. You can't really do anything if you have Bluebeam. It'll be in what's called view only mode. And I'll kind of open that up real quick here. Under here, this is view mode. And that view mode is basically what people who, who don't have a license are going to see. And so when you do view mode, you can see almost everything goes away. I can't really do anything. I don't have any tools. It's on my toolbox. Doesn't let's see if it works. Doesn't even work. So can't all these high, all these things are highlighted out. So if someone downloaded the trial version and they didn't pay for it, they would be able to do, they would, it would turn into view mode only. But in a, in a session, when it's uploaded to the cloud, people, even people who don't have a license can do simple markups, you know, like they can draw a couple things or do a couple call outs. So that's, that's a benefit, I would say, you know, maybe you have someone who doesn't use this program very often. They don't want to pay for it. They can still use a session. If you, if you send them the link to a session, they can get into it and make a couple comments. Now the bad is that there's less functionality and I don't know if this is something that's going to change or this is something that's just built into the way it's done. But the biggest thing that I've noticed, yeah, the main main functionality is just slightly decreased, but then a couple big changes, you can't delete someone else's comments. So, you know, Tim, the Tims are in here, they're making comments in here. I can't delete what they're doing. And for a review, I mean, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. You, you don't want someone deleting your comments, but if I'm working collaboratively with someone else on something we're creating together, you know, maybe we're working on a presentation that we're putting some slides together or whatever. I mean, I like, oh, I want to move this around. I want to delete this. Anything that they have input, you can't adjust other than just crossing out or maybe telling them, hey, delete this. So it's not like Google Doc in that sense. Not everyone has full control. Unfortunately, there is currently no super user setting where someone can literally just have control over their own document. Hopefully that that's something that will be integrated in the future. But that's currently not not a feature. And then a couple other things that I've noticed, those page labels, remember how I, I pulled in all the, the right labels from, from EchoStation or I scanned them from the sheet. Those can't be added during a session, but you can't add them before a session or you can't add them, you know, after you, they call it closing the session when you basically pull it out of the cloud and then you download it and it becomes a normal PDF again. At that point, you know, you'll be able to delete comments. You'll be able to add in add in the page labels. So it's, it's not like you are totally limited, but while it's in a session, certain things can't be done. The measurement tool as well. So if I make, if I calibrate a document or pages in a document, it will only be calibrated for me. It won't be calibrated for all users. So that's a negative. And then there's also some customization restrictions in terms of like adding or, or deleting columns, just st less stuff you can do. So basically my, my take on point is it's good for a lot of things but it's not for everything. All right, so let me show you, I'm gonna jump into a session here. 
All right, so you basically go down to this studio button here, and everyone will need to make a, a Bluebeam account. So <clears throat> once I log in, I can now see three different sessions that I have available. Uh, a session is going to have uh, multiple documents within it. So this is sort, sort of like a project, if you will. And you want to go to this little TV icon at the top. And I am going to just double click on this session that I've already created. There's currently three other people in the session and they're all online. My status is set to reviewing. Maybe I'll set it, set it to presenting. You can make a custom status. But um, within the session, here are all the people, all the attendees. Here are the documents in the session. So I have two documents within here. I have an estimate and a plan sheet. So if I double click on this, it will open it up sort of like it did with those other plans. And you can see that little TV, same TV icon that tells me that I am in a session. See this one here does not have a little TV icon. I could open up multiple documents within that session. And so you can see, and let's see if anyone in this session has been making any comments. So it looks like just me. Oh, Tim Knighton made a comment. He, he added this little remove icon in here. I don't know if any of these other people want to add some comments in while we're while we're working. Oh, Tim, Tim's adding some stuff. So you can see where I would say this is semi-collaboration. You can see what people are are working on. And you can see here that Tim Doherty made this comment. I can't delete this. So, you know, annoying. However, all my old tools are still available. Go to my toolbox and I want to use number three. By the way, you don't have to be on the toolbox setting to click these numbers. I can I can be anywhere and I hit number three and I can oh, someone else deleted that comment. You can tell someone to delete that. But I can't actually physically delete it myself, but I can come in here and mark this up however I want. I made these comments before so I can move them around. And yeah, it's 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 pretty self-explanatory and pretty cool. I can still export out all of those comments if I wanted to. Remember I was telling you I couldn't do the page labels, so I come in here, that thing is it's grayed out. Uh, a lot of these features grayed out. Not totally sure why that setting is. Someone added a giant box in here. Tim Knighton, look at this. This is hilarious. All right, so anyways, you get the point. But let me show you a couple other things that you'd want to know about a session. So say I wanted to add in a, another document. I think you can just drag and drop. Let me try this in case you can't. If I come in here, I can add in another document. A lot of this stuff is going to be an eBuilder. So we're going to be adding documents, creating sessions in eBuilder, inviting people to sessions in eBuilder. But once you open it up, I think you'll still have the ability to add and, and delete documents. And so, and also we might not be using sessions exclusively in eBuilder. But this is an interesting thing. I added this document. I was actually the one who made the comment you can see, but because it was added with comments, I can't adjust them. It's almost like they're baked in now to the document. So. I would upload Bluebeam session files blank. Think of it as almost like a, a flattened PDF. All right, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to invite someone else to this session. So I had click over here and go to invite, show you a couple different ways to do this. I can literally just type in someone's email here and copy from Outlook or whatever, or I can actually click on the address book and it links to your Outlook contact list. So I'm going to go ahead and invite this guy and he will get an email and he will be able to enter into the session. See if he see if he pops up here. You see I right here not joined. And if someone hasn't joined in a while, I might click on him and send him a reminder. You know, if he can't remember how to get into the session. Another couple ways you could get into a session. You see this number right here, 964-613-126. That is the Bluebeam session ID. And pretty much anyone can get into this session, you know, if I if I approve you getting in by knowing this number. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this session here real quick. And if I go back to this one, I can right click on, this is the one we were in, right click on it. I can copy session ID. I can copy session invitation if I wanted to. And I could, oops, I could paste this right here. And then they're going to be able to click on that link and jump in, which is another way to invite someone. Or if anyone in this group here, if you guys hit this little add button and go to join session, if you know that session ID, you could just type it in. And then, you know, when I get in the session, it'll say, oh, this person wants to hop in. Will you allow them to or will you not? So you guys can try that. That's also the way to create a new session is, is by doing that. So as you notice, I only have three sessions here, but we may have many sessions going on. So how do you get to get clear your list? You can remove from the list. 
and I could, if I just remember that ID, I can then add it back onto my list. So this one is, I'm gonna do a little screenshot here so I don't go too crazy. But for example, this is a training test one that I was doing, was messing around with. I am going to leave the session and then I am going to right click and I'll just remove from list. I don't really wanna see this one anymore. Oh, I realized I do not wanna see it. Now I'll go to join, I'll type in that ID 435-728-74, and it just pops right back up on my list. And now it's it's here again. So that's one thing just to note. Another thing uh, that you should note is there's, you can only be in one session at a time. So I can't join those multiple sessions at the same time. So I'm in one session at a time. So you're going to have to go in and leave the session to get into a different one. Or you can do something called finish a session. This is something I would be a little bit careful with. I'm pretty sure the only person who can finish a session is the person who's made it. There are different settings uh, about who has what permissions for each session. And you can set them up when you originally make a session or you can change them afterwards. Um, you can see there's a thing called full control here. So if I do allow here, I think that would allow everyone to close the session, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this one and open a different one. So I don't close or finish that specific session. But if I come in here and I now call my session, I go to finish session. Basically, this is where I'm sort of ending the session. Now, there are a couple cheating, tricky ways you can actually revitalize a session if it gets finished and you don't mean to. But generally speaking, once you finish a session, you're done with it. You're not, you're done with review. You're not going to use it anymore. And so what you, what it does is it basically allows you to generate a report, which I don't know why, what exactly you would need that for, but saves all of the um, information about that setting. It saves all the comments people made, like in a list here in case you wanted to save them. And then you can save the files. So this file, and if I had other files in here, it would allow me to save those as well. So I just click with OK. Session's being finalized. And now it, here is my that drawing. And so now I can go in and I can literally do everything like a normal PDF. It's not a session. It doesn't have that little uh, TV on it anymore. You know, I can come in, I can add the page labels, I can I can mess around with the measurements thing that I, I wasn't able to do as well before. Um, so that's what we're gonna do after we finish. Again, this will hopefully be all auto automated or set up in eBuilder so that this file, once we finish the session, will then be moved into um, the correct project folder and everyone's basically gonna be able to just use it as a normal PDF. So that's that's the plan that we're thinking, but if anyone has any problems, like good ideas or bad ideas related to sessions, just start thinking about it. Definitely feel free to play around with them and yeah, try to try to figure out everything you can because I think they're gonna be part of our feature. Let me show you one more thing. I wanna show you guys how to actually make a session. So if I go to here and just go to new session, let's call this test. Currently, I don't have any open files to add in, but I could add in documents. I showed you before how I could add them in after it's already been set up. And this is where you set the permissions from the attendees. If I, I would recommend having this restrict attendees by email address. If you don't, anyone with the number can just jump right in. I think you can change this after the session's already been created. So you don't, not necessarily locked into all these things, but once you hit this, it will actually create a session. That one document that I uploaded should take me into it. Here we go, training test. And so this is where it's asking me to add in emails. I could add them from the address book. I could copy the link like I showed you before and you could email them directly if you wanted to, but that's basically how it works. There's some more settings in here. Um, this is where you would create those groups. If you wanted to make a group, of people's emails, maybe for a specific project. And then, you know, maybe I have a 30% review, I have 60%, I have a 90%, I have other random sessions that I'm making one people's feedback on. That's when I go in here and I could add emails from groups. So maybe something that will be helpful for you or, or not, depending on, on how your projects go. So this is a cool feature that I think is gonna be really good for like a presentation. And basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to follow someone else, what they're doing. So I don't know, I'm gonna click Tim, I'm gonna click Tim Knight in here. If I click on this little follow attendee, I can see wherever he is, I can see where his cursor is. And I don't know if Tim Knighton is paying attention or not. There he is, you can see his cursor moving. And so say Tim Knighton is giving a presentation and we all wanna 
jump into a session. You can follow along with him. We can even ask him, oh, Tim, like, what's what's this thing? You know, like we can, it's, it just creates a really cool way to do like a design review or a walkthrough. They can follow you, you can follow them. I think that's going to be something that is helpful. When I was at Clark County, we use that quite a bit. We'd be going through a design review. People would jump into the session and someone would be leading, other people would be following along, or maybe they'd be jumping into their part of the project. And yeah, it's just, it's really helpful. Oftentimes someone will say, oh, come look at this. I'm on page three and they'll say, oh, I'll just follow you. And like, just makes it a little bit easier to, to collaborate. So you can a little chat bar down here. I can just type in, hi, hi, Tim. I, I am um, not sure if people actually look in here, but you can chat in there if you want to. I can also set my status. I showed this before. This is going to be helpful. I think when we're reviewing a document before we're done, you can see if, if they, they haven't set their status yet, but if they do, it will show up here and you can see who's done with the document, who's not. You can bug them if you want. You can email them. Uh, I could theoretically send, I could right click on this. I could alert attendee. I could tell Tim Doherty that this is a problem. I think it creates an email link to them. It creates a notification for them as well. There's all sorts of little stuff you can do. I don't know how much of this we're going to use. Hopefully that gives you a little intro to sessions. I think they're a part of our future. Just some general tips and tricks that I've learned. This is stuff that I wish I would have known. So this is not a session. This is a normal PDF. I can manipulate it as I want to. One thing that I've found with these little markup toolbars, it's actually hard to move them. You know, say I wanted to move it. I can't actually move it without dragging it. It's just tedious. So you could you know, hit control C, control V, and then you're stuck again. You can't move it. So there's actually a couple of little tricks. If you hit alt, hold alt while you're dragging something, it will pretty much always move it. And you know, most things you don't really need it. You can just click and drag, but there are certain, certain things. I think, I think the cloud plus might be one of them. There's different, there's different markup tools that using this alt move, alt remove is very helpful. Similarly, if you wanted to, instead of doing control C, control V, and then moving it with an alt click, you could also hit control click and it copies it and moves it over. So this is something that I have found very helpful, especially with our markups. I want to make a comment here. I want to make a comment here. This one's a three. I mean, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can you can do with this. But yeah, just another little trick that I learned that I found helpful. Uh, another thing you can do, if you right click, there's a lot of features and I showed you before where you can make a curve with a line. I can turn this into a curve, convert to arc. So there's, there's that, but you can also right click and you can add another leader. I found this to be very helpful with a lot of comments. You don't clutter up your drawings too much and they're all kind of dynamic you know i move this and they all move with it so really helpful i think I, I end up using that a decent amount and to delete it you just right click and go delete leader you gotta be in the right spot to do that speaking of which there's another thing in here called auto size text box and for anyone who's been using acrobat forever this is such a game changer so you know i have this text box it's too big if i hit auto size text box or you can see alt the z this is the shortcut here it will automatically make it smaller. So, you know, I, again, I don't use this as much as I used to, and I'll show you why, but if you, if you do need a text box that's too big, you can hit Alt Z or right click auto size text box, and it will just make it the right size. So that is very, very handy. And even better than that is if you go into the preferences bar under tools, there is a auto size text box right when you make it. So. I'll show you what happens when you don't have it on. If I use five and, and you can kind of see it's it's too long, so I have to hit Alt Z to make it smaller. But if I set that as it was before, and I'd recommend everyone do this. Now when I hit that same exact command, and I hit in the random letters, now it automatically does it. So the only time you're really gonna need to auto size it is if you're maybe you have a long comment, something like this down here. And I'm copying it over and I just want to call, say test or whatever. And actually that one even made it longer. I'm, I'm not sure exactly when you'd use it, but there are times when you need to use Alt D or the, or the auto size text box. So yeah, really, really cool feature. Okay. Here's another one that I, I really like. All right. Say I'm working on a ramp here and I, this is something that I like to do. I'm often looking at Google street view and like comparing. So this is two tricks I'm going to show you in one, but 
The first thing is that you can actually save stuff off screen. So I can copy this and I can actually keep this over here. And it's actually living in the document. Can't do this in Acrobat. So where might you use this? You know, say I, um, I just turn off all these arguments that I'll completely turn off all my documents and say, I want to do a separate markup over here. So I want to do a custom mark markup in here. You know, there's something wrong with this one. I could come in here and I could, you know, start marking up this one, you know, if, if you wanted to and this theoretically, but if you were, or maybe there's a ramp that we're missing and I want to put it on this page. Normally you run out of space on your page. There's not enough space, but this, this becomes very helpful. You, you can copy this in here. Now, when someone opens this up an Acrobat, it doesn't always come in exactly right. So I just make sure who's ever looking at, if you're doing this kind of markup, make sure whoever looking at this document is also using Bluebeam. Well, one other thing I wanted to show you, I go to street view, say I, this is the corner I'm working on. I keep referring back to this. You know, I really like that you can copy it in, you know, and keep a picture of it. So you always remember what it looks like, but you can actually also and I think you might go do this in Acrobat too. You can right click on this, edit action, add a hyperlink. And then now, you know, I, I'm, I forget about whatever I'm working on, but I go back one day. Oh, what does that look like again? Click on the link and, you know, I can do a quick, quick look in at that drawing. So a little bit more functionality that I find helpful. But I think the real power is like being able to save off screen. So I'm not having to, to shove it in somewhere on this sheet. Um, and then it's clearly, it's not clearly not drafting. You know, it's clearly something that is, is for the design. So this is also another game changer, I would say, is this idea that you can you can open up a document sort of like you do in MicroStation with multiple views. And I don't, you can't do this in Acrobat. Uh, you can actually hit this split vertical. This is also available under the view bar, I believe. Split vertical or split horizontal. And I end up doing this so often that I just do the control two quite often. And basically what it does is it just creates it's the exact same document. So you now it's not, if I, if I'm drawing in something here, it's going to show up right here as well. But where I find this helpful is so I'm, I'm looking at this ramp here, zoomed in. I can't really see the notes. What is note nine again? If I go over here, I can actually make a little note bar, you know, for myself. Okay. Remove curve. You can, it just kind of allows you more flexibility to move and see everything the way you might want to. And then another example, when I might use this, what is that, that detail on sheet two at two B show me again. Let me, let me zoom there. Okay. This is what that shows. Instead of having to like open up, copy the document and open up again or whatever, you know, I can just look at a lot of stuff. I can, I can just look at stuff, you know, together. So super cool thing. Uh, and I think this is the last thing I'm going to show you here. This one is, I think it's pretty powerful when when you're doing reviews for plan sets, you can, and this is probably not the perfect way to show you this, but you can see I have two, two markups here. So I actually haven't shown you this. You can drag these apart and have two different little blue beam windows, different drawings open at the same time. I can right click, I can reattach them. But yeah, you can actually do that when you have the multiple, the split views open as well. But if you go under here to document and go to synchronize document, and synchronize page. So if you're doing a review set and you want to follow along with comments or you get something back from red lines, it's a really good way to, to follow along. So if I do synchronize page, if I zoom in right here. I want to see if this is done. It will follow along um, so I can see, okay, that's finished. You know, that's double label. What else is I need to look at this thing? Did that get done? Okay. That's done. So that's, I think that can be really helpful. I don't use it that much, but there's times where I find it to be super helpful. And actually I'll open up the other, other drawing here. So this is the one that I know Jason and my documents are the exact same length. So I'm going to do this one, which is synchronized document, and it's going to actually stay on the same page and this section needs to go over here. So instead of stay on the same page, not just the same part of the page. So if I'm you know, on page 12 here, I go over to the next page. It's the put the same page and I go to Jason's comments and I open up his comments and say, I'm, I'm basically just zooming around. Okay. Is this one done? Is that one done? Is that one done? I mean, it's just, it's pretty cool if you're doing back checks. So highly recommend those couple tools.